today we will talk about the spinning which is the basic process in production of textiles. The basic requirement of any fabric is the yarn. Majority of the fabrics available in the market today are either woven or knitted with the yarns and these are all used for either apparel purpose or home textile purpose. But some of the fabrics for the industrial purpose and also other purposes are uh, made out of non-woven fabrics category. But it is believed that man learned making of the yarns and also weaving of fabrics by observing the nests of the birds. Actually making of these yarns is something like you know making bigs for home lighting. So to define spinning, spinning is a process of drawing and twisting a bunch of fibers into a continuous strand called yarn. The definition holds good only for the staple fibers such as cotton and other natural fibers except silk. But for filament fibers that is from artificial that is synthetic and man-made fibers, you know the spinning also includes the manufacture because these polymers are not available in fiber form in nature. And so we require to actually produce the polymer in the form of a filament in case of all artificial fibers. So based on kind of fiber and also the type of yarn required and the intended end use, the spinning is classified into two major categories. One is mechanical spinning and the other one is chemical spinning. While mechanical spinning is uh, applicable to all staple fibers, uh, when you take examples of cotton and all other natural fibers except silk and the chemical spinning is applicable to all artificial fibers. Mechanical spinning. There are the number of uh, spinning methods that are invoked today. The selection of the spinning method depends upon the type and kind of fiber and the type of yarn that is required and its end use. Three major methods. Ring spinning is the oldest and fastest method of producing yarns. Other major methods are open end spinning and then air jet spinning. Maybe some other minor methods are available today the techniques are available but uh, still you know these are the only three major methods which are employed for production of majority of the yarns available in the market today. Ring spinning it ca caters to the actually need of the yarn by providing more alignment of the fibers to the yarn axis. Thus you know there is possibility of actually making the yarns more stronger. And this ring spinning is uh, you know applicable to all shorter fibers like you know we have cotton, flax and we have wool and all other natural uh, cellulosic fibers and also the man-made fibers which are cut into staple fibers and then blended with the other fibers. So for all these things ring spinning is being used but the ring spinning again the quality of ring spun yarns depend upon the type of fiber used, uh, fineness of the uh, fiber in that is being used and the quality of that and then the amount of processing that is uh, uh, done uh, while producing these things and the amount of twist that is being imparted in the yarn. The properties of uh, ring spun yarn, it depends upon the amount of alignment and also the amount of longer fibers that are present in the yarn. So longer fibers with good alignment will produce stronger yarns than shorter fibers and also poor alignment. And coming to the production of ring spun yarns, there are certain stages in which the mass of fiber changes and then transforms into a long strand of yarn. And so these uh, stages are, first one is formation of the lap from uh, opening, cleaning and blending uh, operations. Through that we will be able to get lap formation. 
and then lap to cord sliver by carding process cord sliver to comb sliver by combing process and comb sliver to robing by drawing out process and then robing to yarn through drawing again and also twisting and then reeling of the yarn on bobbins or cones or spindles through reeling of the material while describing the mechanical spinning process cotton is generally taken as an example as it lends itself to all the operations that are there in the mechanical spinning the first step in the mechanical spinning is opening cleaning and blending opening refers to separation of small lumps of cotton from tangled mass of fibers and cleaning to remove the trash that is present in the fiber and also blending is to take up the fiber from different bales and uh, blend them together so that we will be able to get a uniform starting material for spinning these are all operations they are done not to one after the other but these are done simultaneously and also not only here they are also the same purpose is being served in the other operations too that is cleaning and also removal of trash and also blending is uh, still carried out in other uh, uh, you know steps also but here uh, when we take the cotton cotton comes out in the form of bales to the uh, spinning mill and the bales are opened and the cotton is taken over a conveyor belt to the opening machine in this machine it goes to a blending feeder from there it goes to uh, cylinders with uh, uh, you know a kind of uh, sharp spikes they have and these spikes will be able to uh, open up the cotton from the lumps lumpy cotton uh, so much tangled that cotton is being opened with these machines and the cylinders are uh, there which will revolve at a very high speed and then uh, take this fiber and they make it into a small lumps the number of cylinders required again depends upon the type of fiber and the fineness of the fiber that is used generally cylinders like percopine uh, machines cylinders are being used for this purpose and which will uh, remove the lumps and then make it into smaller uh, tufts of fibers and th these revolve usually at a speed of 1000 revolutions per minute thus you know the fiber you know comes out in small lumps and also the trash that is present over there like maybe some seeds may be present some burrs may be present or some dust which is suspended it may be present they are all removed and uh, in this process i think around one third of the trash is being removed and then the cotton which is taken out from this is being made in the form of a sheet and called a lap and this lap is a thin one it is uh, having a width of around 40 inches and thickness of 1 inch so this lap is taken from this machine and then placed over a, a carding machine the next step is to align the fibers and bring them little parallel together so that we'll be able to get a strand out of these things so this process is called as carding and uh, the purpose of carding is that uh, to separate again into a smaller uh, lumps again the lumps into fibers separating the fibers so that we can even remove the excess trash that is present in that and secondly to make the the fibers parallel to each other so that you know they will be parallel finally in the uh, to the yarn axis and so these are the two purposes of making the carding carding uh, consists of uh, a machine and uh, several machines are there in the mill each carding machine has a cylinder and a belt the cylinder is uh, having uh, very fine hooks or wire brushes and the same way even the belt contains fine hooks or also uh, wire brushes these two actually 
will be over one above the other and uh, will be moving in concentric magnitude. Okay, but when they are moved, they are moved towards only one side, one direction, but you know the speed is different. The cylinder moves very fast whereas, the belt uh, you know revolves at a slower speed. And so, uh, due to the difference between the speed cylinder and the belt, uh, the fiber becomes teased over there and it gets straightened over there and thus the straightened fiber forms a filmy surface on the cylinder. When uh, it becomes a filmy uh, surface, what happens is whatever dust that is present will be again will fall and then it will be collected by the carding machine. And so, the filmy uh, web, we call it as a web, filmy web now which is present, it is very difficult to take care of it, you know during the further processing. And so, it is made in the form of a rope by passing the web through a funnel shaped device. So, that a sliver, we call it as a card sliver, that rope like uh, mass, we call it as a card sliver and this sliver is being made and out of uh, each carding machine. And uh, this card, card sliver is a very lo loose one and containing fibers which are random, but a little bit of uh, alignment is present in these things and it has no uh, strength at all and uh, when you pull it, uh, it will be uh, just pulled away and so there is no strength in this uh, card sliver. Uh, wherever there are inexpensive fabrics are required, inexpensive yarns are required and they go for this uh, uh, carded sliver, carded sliver is directly made into yarn that is it is attenuated and given some twist and being made. Something like towels we can see that there is no strength required there and we need uh, the fabric to absorb water. So, in such cases this card slivers are being utilized. Then uh, the carded slivers when we take you know they, they do not contain much fiber inside, they are not compact. So, in order to make them in a compact slivers and also to make them more uniform doubling is being done. So, it is nothing but bringing a few slivers together and make them make them into one compact sliver of around half to three fourth inch wider that much carded yarn is being taken. The next step of mechanical spinning is combing. Combing is done only to the yarns which require superior quality and uh, this combing is nothing but it straightens the fibers further and uh, bring out more alignment in the fibers and also remove shorter fibers. And uh, also the due to combing the uh, yarns become more fine, more even and uh, more uh, stronger also because only longer fibers are present in this it will produce very fine, very even, very uniform and uh, very strong yarns. And uh, this combing machine consists of sets of combs and uh, each one, each progressive set you know uh, will be revolving, will be uh, moving at a higher speed. And so, uh, these combs when the hard sliver goes through that you know it is made again in the form of a lap and then made to pass through the combing machine and uh, each set of comb will straighten and then remove a shorter fibers which are below half inch and they are called as noils. And these are removed and finally, when the comb sliver comes out, it will be uh, having only longer fibers and very high degree of parallelism. So, that the final yarn is going to be more even and more stronger. And the noils which are removed here, around 25 percent of uh, that will be wasted like this. And but that byproduct will be a valuable one because it will have a purpose of using it in non-oven industry. When combing is done, usually it is given on the label of the fabric as combed yarn. So, combed yarn always refers for to superior quality in the yarn. Then the next step is the combed slivers are put through a drafting or a drawing step in which you know the carded slivers are taken together 
and uh, they are made in the form of uh, one sliver because the final yawn, the final sliver that comes out of the, all these things should be uniform and also should be compact. And so, the drawing in, in this particular uh, step, several uh, card slivers or comb slivers depending upon the type of yawn required, you know these are brought together and then they are attenuated to take up the shape and uh, you know size of one sliver. That means that here they are all combined, but at the same time drawing takes place as well as you know the again the alignment takes place because they are pulled like this and then it facilitates more alignment, more parallelism over here. And uh, this drawing frame contains again sets of rollers and each set you know has a progressively uh, more speed. And so, when it enters uh, one roller and uh, it takes up this particular uh, sliver, when the second roller is there, it has a more speed. So, due to this, the speed difference between the rollers, you know, the they pull the fiber, that means they attenuate the fiber again uh, and then make it into a smaller diameters. So, like this, it will be drawn and drawn and uh, again this will be drawn in the other operations that to come. But here, uh, one more thing to be told here is that around 6 to 8 uh, slivers are usually combined and but when blending has to take place, they will do the blending over here. For example, in case of cotton and polyester blends, uh, of 50 is to 50, then 4 slivers of cotton and 4 slivers of polyester are combined together to form a single sliver. So, the single sliver will contain 50 percent of cotton and 50 percent of uh, polyester. By pulling action of these uh, rollers, the sliver gets attenuated and uh, becomes longer and then these uh, slivers, the drawn slivers are passed through the slubber and then the similar rollers there also attenuate the fiber into thinner diameters again and then finally, it passes to the spindles where the first twist is given in order to withstand the strain of the roving frame and then they are wound on bobbins. The next step in roving operation, further drawing takes place because the roving frames facilitate drawing and attenuation of uh, these uh, yawns and uh, finally, uh, to get a, a sliver uh, which has the size of a pencil lead two stages of roving is apparent here, one is intermediate and the final. And both the processes are same, but only thing is that the size of the sliver which it receives in the beginning and also when it comes out will be different. That means, it is attenuated still and then a thinner yawn is being produced by these two processes. And uh, roving is the uh, final stage before insertion of this uh, twist. And so, most of the drawing is completed over here, but even though little more drawing and attenuation continues in the spinning process. And the roving here has no strength at all, when you pull it, it comes apart and so, uh, it contains only the enough twist that is required to take up the strain during the spinning process. Spinning is the final operation in the manufacture of uh, these yawns. And spinning completes the yawn formation by giving, by taking the roving and drawing it and then uh, inserting the twist all in one single operation. Then the twisted yawn is wound on uh, spools or uh, you know bobbins and all. All these, this happens in one operation that is drawing, twisting and then winding. It takes place in one operation. The spinning frame consists of uh, sets of uh, uh, you know rollers and each roller again in case of roving and other drawing operations, here also there is a speed difference between the first roller and the second roller. And the difference between these two rollers, the speed you know that uh, will uh, facilitate attenuation of the you know, slivers further and the slivers become you know very uniform in size and also 
the proper alignment is present. And so, these are fed again to the spinning frames and there are two kinds of spinning frames that are uh, in vogue today commercially and one is the ring frame and the other one is the mule frame. Ring frame is employed when the process has to be done very at a faster speed and also to produce some coarser ions. But when fine ions are produced, you know, you, they have to definitely take the mule frame. Mule frame is a slow process, but it produces high quality, very, very fine ions. So, the ring frame, when you take it because it is a commercially viable one, the ring frame contains uh, one U-shaped uh, traveler and it will be uh, winding round one spindle, you know, that is take up uh, package. So, it will be going around that and there is a difference between the speed of this uh, U-shaped traveler and also the take up package. The traveler moves at a slower rate when compared to the take up package and so the roving is fed through this U-shaped traveler onto the bobbin which is placed in the spindle. The spindle rotates very at a very high speed of 13,000 revolutions per minute and whereas this uh, U-shaped traveler will not be moving so fast. And so the difference between the, these two will produce the twist in the material. It also attenuates again and also impart the twist in the yawn. And then the yawn after giving the twist, the final yawn will be taken in the form of skeins or wound on bobbins for further processing. So far we learned how the shorter staple fibers are made into long yawns by mechanical spinning. But if the fibrous material is not available in fiber form, then we need to spin it by manufacturing the fiber and then giving the twist. And so, this part of chemical spinning we will be dealing in the next episode.